Welcome back, everyone, to Hearts of Iron for the Fire Rises sub-mod in which we're playing as the Russian Federation. I'm your host, Mr. Vladimir Putin Lover. But we gotta talk about Zeranovsky. My predictions have come true. With that kind of a crisis all around, just like we feared, Zeranovsky has things to say. He took a stand at the Duma's podium and went off with a fiery speech. You see now, with the crash of Wall Street economy, those troubles in the U.S. are unavoidable. The main capitalist collapse. Who said this first on the very podium? We are LDPR. But again, Zuganov laughed. Ed, the road deputies laughed. Who's laughing now, I said. Donald, don't even try. You won't save your country. I was right again. This were the last elections in America. After it, everything will be lost. But we must not lose our focus. We still have NATO, and then we have the Banderite Ukraine that kills our people in Donbass. I would have liked for these coming years to be peaceful, but I also love telling the truth. That's who I am. For more than 70 years, I tell the truth. But I also love... <clears throat> Those years won't be peaceful, though. This will be the time when Russia once again becomes a great country, and everyone will shut up and listen to our country. Or they will shut us up and genocide the Russians not only in Donbass, but in Western Russia proper. This Zeranovsky speech has gained a large traction online, with people once again calling for him the great predictor. So, as always, Vladimir Volvovich. Volvovich. So, America's collapse, like that's pretty normal. Uh, we don't really like Joe Biden. We really don't care for Donald Trump. Um, Green Mountain Company. Look at this guy. Seems kind of a smiley guy, Christopher Heaven. Uh huh. Cuomo, uh, Iron Front, Patriot Front, and whatnot. Those guys down there. I don't think we really care about what's happening in America, truth be told. We really don't care for the APLA. Who actually, who do we like down here? Ultra conservatives, so. But we do have uh, potential things we must get done here. But we're still going on having a good old time doing all this stuff here and whatnot and uh, we're still in Saudi Arabia having a fun time the president's statement the shock of America's collapse still uh, lingers on in Russia despite our dislike of the American government nobody was able to predict such a radical turn of events huh. the president of the Russian Federation has made a public statement on the matter it lasted for several minutes and was filled with a lot of thoughts and historical remarks but all of them the Russian population seems to take note of one practical quote the USSR understood that the collapse of the Western capitalism was inevitable. The Russian citizens feel a deep sympathy for hardships faced by the common Americans. I can't help but recall a quote said by the Russian philosopher Ivan Ilyin. Eh, we're going to go with the communist route for this campaign. Subvert the LDPR influence. The LDPR needs to be pressure, as it is the mainstream body of the right is moving in Russia. You know the drill, chop chop. Texan nationalist plea for support. An interesting communique came into the foreign office today. As a rebel group from Texas pleads our government for weapons, vehicles, and general military assistance in their desire to create independent Texas with free warm water ports with no ties to either federal go government. We do need friends with warm water ports. Why not? I'd rather not. Don't remember what happened at the Alamo? Sure. Because they do want to get the guarantee of the system. And we need to meet with Zyuganov or Zeranovsky. So we do this one. The leader of the CPRF is a wise man. He's a dear colleague of a president. He's a veteran of politics. Almost beating Yeltsin in 1996 elections. Uh, if not for American oligarchic meddling, however, Vladimir Putin thinks it is appropriate to give some advice to how his party should be run from now on. Oh, I meet with Zirinovsky. Zirinovsky has been called a clown of Russian politics, yet that cannot be further from the truth. He knows how to grow his brand and party and his knowledge. In geopolitics and interpolitical games cannot be overstated. This is why our great president wants to talk with him about the future of the party. Hope that he'll be heard. New opportunities in Guinea. A tidal wave of coups which has swept the Sahel region of West Africa has now reached the shores of the Atlantic. Uh, with the Republic of Guinea having succumbed to a military revolt, however, unlike the military juntas which have been established in the region, Guinea represents a unique opportunity for a country as they have access to warm water ports. A strategic ally as such as them is processed in the type of sh rapidly shifting power bases. We should waste no time in building for new friendly relations with the Guinean leadership. Well, of course, election results. Elections of the 8th State Duma of the Russian Federation were on the September 19th, 17th and 19th, ending a united day of voting on September 19th. On the night of the 20th, the day after the elections to the State Duma ended, the head of the Moscow City Committee of the CPRF, Valery Rashkin, organized a protest against fraud in the format of a meeting with the deputy. On September 23rd, the creation of a coalition inner party committee for the abolition of free electro or remote electronic voting was announced. It consisted of opposition candidates who ran in the Moscow districts. Today, the protest continued in Moscow, Saratov, Yekaterinburg, Ufa, Volgograd, and other cities of the country. Unpleasant. Let's secure Miami. Hmm. We don't really care for them having more influences. Permit Wagner forces. Oh, they're at war.
How many guys can we send you? Uh, what type of terrain is it down here? Is it mostly just plains, it looks like? Mali. How are we doing in Saudi Arabia? Having fun? I hope so. That's why we come down here. Hello. Nice. Do we have more oligarchic support? Ah, oh, there you go. Very nice. Very good. Uh huh. Well, if you can snip them right here, that'd probably be the best. Belarus allows flights from Syria. Interesting, okay. Border crisis. American refugee point established in Kamchatsky. We'll, eat, we'll do what we can for them. Uh, these conscripts to Saudi Arabia. Economic contracts with Guinea, yeah. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens. Attacking, getting attacks, pretty normal. Canada leads NATO, that's nice. There you go. Help them out. There you go. Good job, guys. <clears throat> you go here next, you can destroy these guys too. Uh, you might need a general, though. back to them just a little bit. You're single-handedly holding this place off. It's pretty nice. We have no support. Moose. The sand and employee of the Committee for Hunting and Fishery in Saratov region stopped at Lada Lagars Largas Karav CPRF Deputy Valerie Rashkin, in the trunk of which was a distressed moose carcass. This happened on the night of October 29th in Lysogorsky district, 60 kilometers from Saratov. It's a 49 year old man in the car together with a politician. Lashkin asked himself that he saw the carcass of a dead animal in the woods and wanted to give it to the police. A criminal case for illegal hunting was initiated. How unpleasant. Arrest nationalist extremists. Towers of the Kremlin meet with this guy. He's getting there. He's learning. Hopefully. Armor SPG. Oh, what is this? EU negotiated border crisis? Resolve issues. It's been African Corps in there. No, oh, it was expand all people, Russian people's front. Coalition of socio-political organizations of public movement created in May of 2011 at the suggestion of Prime Minister Vladimir Putin as an association on equal terms, a multi-directional political players with the aim of moving Russia towards joint efforts. Huh. Call on Russian unity. Purge problematic oligarchs. I like this one. The current mainstream right, for the most part, is funded by oligarchs. The problem, however, is that these oligarchs are loyal to our system. To make sure they stay in line, both to pressure them and please them, we get arrested liberal oligarchs who have opened criminal cases connected to them, killing two birds with one stone. With one stone. That'd be great. Uh, we should be fine helping them out here. 
It's pretty easy overall. Very nice. Let's so get there first. Uh oh, Vladimir Putin got sick with COVID 19. How does last for the caucuses? The president contracted the COVID 19 infection. His condition is not being monitored by the best doctors. Disturbing. Oh boy. Let's see what we can do here first. <clears throat> Rock and war. Eh, we can do this one, why not? We'll see what happens. Mali? We can do that, why not? Our next election is in 2024. They're just kind of hanging out there. You slowly winning here? Yes. Towers of the Kremlin. Well, the political parties are united in foreign policy and can act as yes men. The Russia is not a uniparty state. The towers, as we call them, are a collection of people throughout the government with similar backgrounds and views, pushing their collective agendas forward. The two main towers are the technocrats and the Siloviki. Well, the technocrats argue for more money in the technological projects ranging from nuclear power to obvious cash grabs. The Siloviki argue for more money in military projects ranging from nuclear weapons to obvious cash grabs. Placating either of these blocks would bring different benefits, but might cause some problems too. There you go. That's very good. Can you actually win here? Yeah, I'll see. Are you guys losing here yet? They're literally the only one holding this down. It's a good chance you'll get encircled, unfortunately. I thought that would be the end of them. But I guess I was wrong. Can you help out here? Let's blow them up. Oh! The president's condition is worsening. Despite all his efforts, Vladimir Putin is only getting worse. The doctors explain their helplessness by the fact that, in addition to the coronavirus, the patient has also had various other chronic diseases that make the situation almost hopeless. In 2020, Putin has drafted a bill that will provide for former heads of state to be senators for life. Maybe some exercise this right and give the presidency to a new person? Uh. It's about time, Sergei Narshish, Narishkin, my old opponent. No, it's too early for me to leave. I think I want to send us into a panic. Oh, we look sad. We look like we have COVID. We're not doing well right now. Oh, there's another base right here too. Blitz him really hard. Welcome to Zignato, which is good to see. Ukraine withdraws from Minsk Protocol. The provocative Kiev regime has announced uh, its withdrawal from the Minsk Protocol. The decision, decision came after a continued provocation from the federal state of Novorossiya. As yet another basis claim from the Zelensky regime to trample on the rights of the Russian minority, a reckless endeavor. Towers of the Kremlin. Arrest nationalist extremists. Well, people like Tessak have already committed suicide, and his team is either gone without a trace or fleeing to Europe. There still exists a number of small scale nationalist movements threatening our system. We must deal with them. Gal. Can you take these guys on one by one? Mass riots in Kazakhstan. Mass protests have begun in Kazakhstan. The reason was increasing gas prices. Protesters took to the streets across the city, demanding the resignation of the government and new elections. In some cities, the protests have turned into clashes with the police who are trying to disperse the protests. Monitor the situation closely. Oh, look at all the political power we have. By the Sulaviki. Hmm. Interesting. By the Technocrats. The other one looks like it kind of hurts us in the end. Church authority. Promote new people. National liberation movement. Communists of Russia. Send in the police. We could go with high taxes, maybe. No, yeah, we're gonna go with high taxes. It sucks, but we kinda need it. Oh, we're done with the worldwide financial crisis. Thank God. Kazakh stands. Oh, Kazakh rights escalate. The decision will be made. The region of Alkmola. Um, huh. 
Alright. It's learning a lot, which is good. Another bay of school. During the protest in Kazakhstan, something incredible happened, a coup d'etat. The game before was led by Dariga Nazarbayeva, the eldest daughter of the country's former president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, has seized power in the country. The Nazarbayev clan, which has held power in Kazakhstan for decades, has now full control of the country. Dariga Nazarbayeva, who previously held high positions in the government and parliament, has now become a true autocrat. She fancies herself the Kazakh Catherine the Great and does not hide her ambitions in her speeches. She promises to lead Kazakhstan to new heights and make it one of the world's leading powers. Not nah, much has changed for us, I guess. All the Kazakh military investments in the southern Rostov Oblast. Can I see any more volunteers yet? No, darn it. Uh huh. Where is this? Southern Rostov Oblast. It's fine. Better at least. Open New York. Utilize Soviet nationalists. We could do this one. The president only needs his part and nothing else will bring the United Russia to come from what Jordan opinion polls good work. Or we can do this one. Justice for Russia, for truth is an interesting political entity. Composed of moderate socialists, Nazbal veterans, and centralists, it is in a precarious position. What helps is that while they're heavily critical of the United Russia, they're loyal to our president. We can use them to get votes away from the CPRF, though. Uh, yeah, please for help. Recently, was an anti constitutional coup in Kazakhstan where anti Russian forces seized power. Fortunately, legitimate President Kasim Yomar Tokayev was brought to safety by our security services and is in now temporary DACA in Orenburg. After several days of calm, he wrote a letter to the President of the Russian Federation begging for help in returning stability and lawful order to the Republic of Kazakhstan. The first part of the letter was widely disseminated by the Russian media, but in the second part, which is closed to the public, Tokayev admitted the fallacy of his multi vector policy and offered significant concessions to Russia if it agrees to intervene. Among them, Tokayev even agreed to hold referendums on Russian accession into the territories of northern Kazakhstan. Despite such generous Tokayev gifts, the final decision making rests with the Russian government. Let's support them. Well, should have realized this one was coming. Oh, so I could be playing this completely wrongly, but it is what it is. We'll come back to Molly, help him out later on. Nice. Russian pacification operation in Kazakhstan. Uh, what stand? They're slowly going in. Do we have any other planes here we really care about? Uh, naval attacks, strategic bombers, not really. Liberals protest against Kazakhstan of intervention. Uh, use rough measures. We must not appear weak. Yeah. Yeah. Use JR to hinder LPDR.
Keep going, guys. Vladimir Putin is dead in a tragic turn of events. Vladimir Putin passed away due to complications of COVID-19. The death of his new the news of his death came as a shock to the nation, as many believe he was still capable of leading. In order to ensure a smooth transition of power, Mikhail Mush M Mishustin was swiftly appointed as a new leader according to the protocol. Despite the unexpected crisis, the country managed to avoid any further turmoil. Uh, <clears throat> this, uh, citizens across Russia gathered for rallies and lowered state flags. As a sign of respect for Putin's memory, even those who had criticized his leadership expressed their condolences to his family. Dmitry Medvedev took to social media to express his heartfelt sorrow, acknowledging the deep impact his news has had on him and many other Russians. Today is undoubtedly a day of immense grief for the entire nation. Rest in peace. Now what? Well, so much for that. You know, the Communist Party. Ramp up uh, populist agitation. I guess, can you go a different route? I mean, I guess, completed by event. Well, we're going to go th this route anyways, because we're kind of pooping, pooping this up, propping this up. The CPRF has long since been written off by the leftist groups as a footnote, not a true communist movement. Yet during this was once in a lifetime of opportunity, they will stand aside and let the capitalists take our victory away from them just like they did in 1996. No, they'll rally behind Zyuganov and return to Russia to its rifle path. Trying to get through Kazakhstan. Takes forever. Uh, they have little horse divisions. Oh. Mikhail Mush Mishustin announced his early election. Acting President Mikhail Mishustin not dared to serve out his current term and announce a new presidential election, which he has not seen himself as candidate. Oh, with their government elect remaining unstable, it's clear that something must be done. Uh... Uh, for the past few decades, Russian presidential elections were a rather boring event, yet now, as all political parties, towers, and focus groups converge over the seat of the president, it seems that this election will decide the fate of our nation for decades to come. New revelation. Russia has been the home of the socialist and communist movement. It was here that the first successful communist state has arisen, yet it was shattered and slowed for the highest bidder. We must revolt against this injustice, for the proletariat must be freed. Funeral held for Putin. They didn't mark a somber day in Russia's history, uh, as thousands of individuals... <clears throat> Including politicians and ordinary citizens gathered to bid a final farewell to Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. The ceremony took place in the Column Hall of Moscow's Palace of Unions, where numerous public speakers, political party leaders, and government officials paid their respects by laying flowers in Putin's open coffin. Following this, a funeral service was held in the Christ the Savior Cathedral, where Patriarch Kirill offered prayers for Putin's eternal peace. One of the most poignant memories or moments of the day was Dmitry Medvedev's emotional speech, during which some speculate he came close to tears. In his address, Medvedev uh, expressed his unwavering loyalty to Putin's vision and proclaimed him to be the greatest figure in modern Russian history. I guess for now we can uh, rest well. Well, I guess we won. Nice job, guys. Is going oversight still? That's fine. Oopsie. Because we got some bigger fish to fry here. Little Russian Spring. And you're still str probably struggling here, aren't you? Preparations for the next presidential election. So, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, the race for the president started. Yeah, that was this. That was the United Russia. Bonus for completing a thousand years of Putinism. Huh. What do we have here? Ah. Ten steps to people's power. CPRF, your party. Many claim that the Communist Party of the Russian Federation is a sham, popular by senile, disconnected from reality, yet it is we who are leaders of the leftist movement in Russia, and it is we who have the ability to restore Soviet glory, unlike all other leftist movements consisting of 100 to, 10 to 20 people. We're your party, and there's no alternative. To garner more support, we must make our ideals easy to digest and vote for. For that, we'll take 10 steps to the People's Power Program and promote it countrywide. The nation must know what they vote for. Absolutely. We need more motorized, don't we? Tokyo ever turns to power. Oh, look at that. Well. Is there anything we could spare around here at all? Not really, not too much. Uh huh. After a brief interim government, Yasim Yomart Tokoyev returned to the country's president, although the term dictator is now more appropriate. Tokoyev's first steps became tough. He reformed his party, making a centralized mechanism anti-Russian. Uh, liberal demonstrations are strictly controlled by both the Russian armed forces and by the forces of Kazakhstan. 
Nazara Bayev's uh, legacy is being eradicated, and a cult of new Bakhtiar Tokiev is being built in the country. At the same time, he's completely loyal to Russia and is ready to make any concessions to us and our allies, of course. Maybe Kazakhstan will someday return to its usual course, but for now, the new reality is a new normal for a long time. Kazakhstan's back. Hey, that's great. We love Kazakhstan, especially when they listen to us. There you go. Renaming of Astana. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you for playing. Our Soviet past. Huh. To told old guard, favorite of smart voting. Hmm. I don't know. Oh. Here. Election day. Communist part of the Russian Federation. Other parties campaigning. Build up union of left patriotic forces. Despite having no chance of winning elections themselves, the SRZP has enough political influence to lure in the voter base for favorite candidates. We need to negotiate a deal so the voices choose the right side. Thirty years in defense of workers. The CPRF is the champion of the Russian working class, second biggest party in the Russian Duma. We persistently fight against oligarchic rule and poverty for workers' rights, and of course, the eventual restoration of the Soviet motherland. While many non system communists sell out revisionism, it is those Marxists who left the Russian workers to rot, while they sit comfortably waiting for the revolution to disappear. The CPRF did not. They accepted parliamentary politics, only to have wider audience platforms for ag agitation and reform. With communist sentiment is still strong in Russia, number two can become number one. Well, that's nice. Uh, SZRP joins the CPRF's coalition. So they should stick together. Wrangle the oligarchs, yeah. Uh, Avramzan Kadrayurov supports Mez uh, Medvedev. The head of the Chechen Republic has announced support for the United Russian candidate, Dmitry Medvedev. The blue comes to no surprise as Kadryov, Kadyarov himself was very close to the former administration. Regardless, his support will certainly be of use in the future. Well done. Should be fine. And we're there. Almost. LDPR and CPRF rally against corruption. Seemingly at random, both supports of both parties at rallies banded together in protest against United Russia. Chanting phrases against Dmitry Medvedev and his cabinet for the corruption of endless ties of oligarchs. The campaign continued on loud, the strange leftist rightist alliance forming. Despite the hatred of each other, the goal of success is only hampered by one entity. The enemy of my enemy, of course, is my friend. It was Putin who kept us all together. With him gone, what can we do? Good. And now we go in here once this is done. Victory day. There you go. Stop attacking us. There you go. So you can help support the attack there. Alright, so we've got a couple more events. Airburst weapons, huh? Police breaking up opposition rallies. Violence erupted in multiple political rallies between police and supporters of the LDPR and CPRF. Initially, the skirmishes were isolated between the two parties until the street fights naturally turned into city block along brawls. Riot police in the dozens were dispatched to break the fighting, but the presence only furthered the violence. Nearly 20 people have been reported dead from these fights, and countless more injured. Order must be kept. And total de Nazarbevization. Tokyo okay, began a policy of total denazarbevization. All right, all right. Party of pensioners support the LDPR. In the recent Congress of POP, the leaders are not supported for LDPR's candidate, and their speech is a highlighted Zeronovsky's uh, monetary support for the older populace and the LDPR social programs that support betterment of elderly housing. In the end, they urge all their voters and voters of allied parties to vote for LDPR and commit joint election campaigns around Russia. Interesting. So, uh, we're still stuck. Not. 
able to do anything, unfortunately. Got some comments, though. Um, someone, some of you actually did want me to go down the LDPR route. But we're going down the comments route for now. Um, so we'll play as Russia again sometime. Not sure when, but we'll play as them again sometime and kind of go there. I'll probably do this route, other routes. I like the economic contracts as we are still here in Africa. Because don't we love Africa? Oh, yes. We love Africa so, so much. Uh, someone says, Putinism leads to the our timeline, uh, which usually leads to Russia defeating, defeating Ukraine. Ah, there you go. This is that group. Uh, what else we got to see? Uh, so, um, let's see. Reform the USSR as Yuri Alfonin and the KPRF bro. Try it. So it says, uh, darn, you could have annexed Belarus early if you picked repair the Union State. Yeah, I, I figured that would be more of the normal thing to do. But I didn't want to do that one, just because that seemed like normal to do. Uh, district development. That's fine to do that too. Uh, someone says, what beautiful icons of state focuses are in this mod? It's an impressive work. Someone says, let's go reformist communist with mass computerization and Linux cyber bureaucracy. What about corrupt apparatus? Can you do China as Hu Chuanhua by losing the war with Taiwan and picking the democratic path? Huh. Someone else also says, go communist. So what are you waiting for? Afonin, a selected candidate, Karatonin, uh, that. Karatonov, 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 Afonin, versus Levchenko. Youth for communism. Favorite of smart voting. Well, the liberal opposition are, are vile American bootlickers. Their system of smart voting is an interesting one, considering that we are the only mainstream party that can support. We can utilize this to our advantage. And hey, if these guys hate Russian imperialism and Putinism so much, you vote to restore the USSR, it isn't a problem. Or Soviet past. We're the children of a great civilization, one that defeated the greatest evils and resisted capitalist oppression, one that conquered both the stars and the atom. This is the nation we will rebuild, and this is the only proof we need to claim our legitimacy. CPRF wins elections. In a monumental electoral event, that will undoubtedly be etched into the annals of Russian history, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation has emerged victorious. Uh, Sending ripples of jubilation throughout the streets of Moscow and other major urban centers. The sight of victory banners fluttering in the wind alongside Soviet flags was a poignant symbol of the resounding triumph that had been achieved. Despite the euphoria that engulfed the nation, there were dissenting voices that sought to cast a shadow of doubt over the legitimacy of the election results. Allegations of fraud and unfound conspiracy theories were concocted in an attempt to undermine the significance of the Communist Party's win. The Western press, ever quick to sound alarms and raise specters of fear, painted a picture of the Communist Party as a bastion of nationalists and revanchists, intent on restoring the USSR and posing a grave threat to Western imperialism. However, amidst a cacophony of skepticism and fear-mongering, one undeniable truth remained. The people had spoken. Through their votes, they had expressed a fervent desire for the resurgence of the glorious Union that once stood as a beacon of hope and strength. Great. Gennady Zuganov victorious in the Russian elections. Look at this. The Communist Party of the Russian Federation emerged victorious in the early elections today, with Gennady Zuganov at the helm. The outcome has triggered mixed reactions both domestically and internationally, with some expressing concern over a potential resurgence of the USSR. Zyuganov, a veteran and politician and a long-time leader of the CPRF, addressed a jubilant crowd during a victory rally in Moscow's Red Square. Supporters waved red flags and chanted slogans hailing the party's triumph, while Zyuganov vowed to prioritize social justice and economic equality. The victory of the CPRF, which secured a majority in the state Duma, marks a significant shift in the Russian politics. The party's platform emphasizes a return to socialist policies, advocating for increased state control over key industries and wealth redistribution. This ideological departure from the capitalist-oriented policies of recent years has raised concerns among some sectors of society. Internationally, Western nations have been watching these developments with caution. Memories of the Soviet era and its geopolitical implications have resurfaced, prompting concerns about Russia's future trajectory under Zyuganov's leadership. <coughs> Some observers fear that a more assertive Russia could challenge global current, glo current global order and potentially viable tensions. The people have spoken. That's right. Election victory. The revolution is finally won, not by a storm in the barricades, but at the ballot box. No one could have predicted this outcome, and all those who lied to the CPRF have a, as a relic of the past are now forced to look on in bewilderment. The people have made their choice. The future belongs to socialism. Uh, release political prisoners. With the arrival of the new authorities, the government faces the question, who should we consider political prisoners? Among them are victims of the regime's repression, but also those who threaten the new order. A decision must be made. Release all of them or to conduct a thorough check to determine who is truly worthy of freedom. What is this? Adding and reforming the union. Oh crap, that's really bad. Intro party struggle. Old guard versus the Rashkin's group sides. Oh boy. Well, so, so much for Putin. Oh, we have the Red Eagle. Oh, that's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Let's go and retreat here. 
Well, at least we became red finally. I was kind of waiting for that to happen. I'm like, when's it gonna happen? Let's go and retreat. It's fine. Mexican authority collapses. State Duma, Russian House of Guards. There you go. Election victory. Roll back liberal reforms. Well, issues of the other parties. After the defeat of the United Russia, the CPRF force faces a challenge. What to do with the rest of the political forces? Their future is uncertain. Some propose a complete liquidation of the opposition, while others believe that their gradual integration into the social system is necessary. The debate continues, and the fate of the other parties hang in the balance. The release of political prisoners. We the comes to promise the people that we would release political prisoners who are illegally imprisoned by Putin's regime. Well, it's probably worth already. We'll release only leftist political prisoners. Free everyone but the fascists. A communist, a liberal, even a fascist, even Navalny, everyone will be free. Um, it really hurts stability, but that's okay. So, where's the inter. Ah, here we go. Rashkin's group versus Old Guard. Civilian war support. Get a lot more political power, but we use a lot of stability and whatnot. Authoritarian socialists. Truth be told, I have no idea. Restore the 1970 uh, Constitution. Draft a new Constitution. First Convocation. Socialism with a human face. Sword and Shield of the Revolution. Continue party rejuvenation. Full power of the Soviets. Soviet Renaissance, New Lenin enrollment, or reconstruct the party state. Glorify Stalin, more attack, empower the premier, shrine democratic centralism, take advantage of connections, cooperate with the church, integrate Belarus into FSR, FSR, invite CSTL members to the USSR. You can just straight up annex them, huh? I like that one. Cult of Lenin. Protect Russian minorities. Invite the left front. The Union Reform. And Operation Invictus. Operation Minerva. March West. Little Saturn. Interesting. Honestly, I kind of want to see with Rashkin's group. Let's make a new group. New Soviet Parliament. The State Duma in its current form has served its time. The CPRF announces the imminent dissolution of this relic of the past along with the Federation Council destroying the entire Federal Assembly. The people soon elect their representatives to a new Soviet Parliament, a truly democratic one, be it the Supreme Soviet or the Congress of People's Deputies, which body will be the base for the new social state for the party to decide. Sure, why not? How are we doing here? Yeah, just blow them up. You know what? Go here first. Fate of the United Russia. Now that we're in power, we cannot allow our enemies to go unpunished. After a thorough investigation of all the crimes they have committed by United Russia, the parties declared illegal and his leaders are sent to jail. The most humane court in the history of the world. That's right. Ah, fate of the Just Russia. Just Russia, for truth, one of the Kremlin's pet projects. It is a fourth part in the Duma, although it's been artificially grown, there's a lot of valuable personnel we could use. Due to the fact that they support us in the election, maybe one of them will want to be our minister. Let's poach Oleg Shine and the old socialists. Let's poach Zakhar Prilipin and the Soviet nationalists. Fate of LDPR. The LDPR is on the verge of extinction. After a victory, the question of the future comes ahead. Favor or hammer? Some of the top of the government said the LDPR should be preserved as a symbol of the opposition as a party that can be balanced to the political forces, but others insist that Zeronevsky and his party should not be treated with ceremony. They should be crushed now while they're weak. While the LDPR could become a breeding ground for discontent, a hotbed of kind of revolution, what will we choose? Forgiveness or collapse? Let's not touch old Zeronevsky. 
Beat the fascists. Towards the side of Old Guard. Beat them? Beat the liberals. The liberal opposition, although opposed to the Putin regime, fought for the same capitalism, only westernized, rather than for real freedom for the people. They managed to change, but dreamed of replacing some oligarchs with others. Now face an important decision. On the one hand, Mercy can preserve the semblance of democratic opposition and avoid accusations of repression. Liberals can serve as a tool for controlling a sprawling bureaucracy, but on the other hand, they can become a source of hostile ideology that undermines their socialist ideals. The destruction will put an end to capitalist influences and strengthen their dominance. What will win out? Pragmatism or determination will go all the way? Spare them. Oh. Gennady Zyuganov restores the RSFSR. A well, specter is haunting Europe, the specter of communism. All the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exercise the specter. The oligarchs in United Russia, Baerbock and Kolona, German radicals and American uh, police spies. Despite the death of the Union in 1991, <clears throat> it seems like a specter the Union has risen from the dead. Today, the new elected president, Gennady Zyuganov, by proving it a law, renaming the country, has declared the end of the Russian Federation and the birth of the Soviet, Feder Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. Announced in front of a domestic crowd, the anthem of the Soviet Union was aired for the first time in over three decades, sung in tandem with crowds throughout the streets. With all the domestic attitudes jubilant with the hopeful return to superpower status and the glory of the old Union, the international community has been mixed. Reactions from the former Eastern Bloc has been the harshest, with the Baltic nations warning against repeating mis the mistakes of the 20th century, and Ukraine did not see the move. All power to the Soviets. All special regional modifiers will be removed. Hey, great, and we changed the flags, thank God. Ah, what a beautiful ride again. And then what? I do want to try to draft the new constitution. A Rashkin's group, in a quiet coup of the party, took power in its own hands and presented a new radical constitution. Democratic centralism proved its strength. Despite the indignation of some communists, the majority of the party accepted this fact. The new constitution would be the basis for a modern social state with the people at the center of all reforms, the aftertaste of victory. <clears throat> for these 30 years, Russia has been held in the claws of Yeltsin Putin criminals, but finally we have had a chance. The news of the CPRF's victory provoked various reactions among the left, and many people who had always considered it the party of losers found themselves confused. Konstantin Tsiomin, who did not support the CPRF in the elections, is already eager to return to the state television. Andrei Rudoy, who called for active boycott, has suddenly deleted all videos criticizing the CPRF from his channel and is already speaking out in support of individuals from our party, the WRP, C RCWP, RSM, and other small groups and Marxist clubs such as the Zogzeki, NSDR, and various other groups. Eventually gave up with the idea of creating a real People's Revolutionary Party in order not to stir up even more strife among the left or even split further on the issue of attitude towards the new government. Many of them still call us fake communists and urges us to continue the struggle for true socialism. <clears throat> the Communists of Russia. We recently got rid of Sorykin, a Central Committee chairman has joined us in general today. We can say with confidence that our party is attracted to itself, practically all the serious and not so serious leftist forces in the country. Unity is our strength. Look at that. And we have a coalition. Great. Soviet Parliament, actually, would this help across amphibious? Uh, short sure, bombardment now. The time has come to say goodbye to the ill fated State Duma created by Yeltsin and the blood of the Russian people. Now it's time to create a new supreme body of the state power, a new parliament. What do we do as a basis? A unicameral Soviet, Supreme Soviet before 1990, or a bicameral Congress of the People's Deputies? Congress of People's Deputies of the Supreme Soviet. We're going to go this one Congress of People's Deputies. Wrangle oligarchs. Where are we at for industrial development? Uh, academic. This is slowly getting worse, which really is bad. Yeah, it's not good. Intermediate manufacturing. It is slowly getting worse. Not ideal. Are you becoming an organizer? You should be. Kwaiku, Valery Rashkin, a well-known politician and leader of the opposition group in the Communist Party, decided to quietly sabotage an emergency party congress that was to be held after the victory in the presidential election. At this congress, it was planned to approve the draft of a new constitution and elect Gennady Zyuganov as the head of the party, but Valery Rashkin and supporters decided to change the course uh, of events. During the voting, they silently elected Rashkin as the head of the party. The people perceived this as a silent coup, but since the grassroots party activists were on the Rashkin's side, the situation remained relatively calm. This move caused great irritation among Zyuganov supporters and the part of the party members. We consider this action a betrayal and violation, violation of party discipline, however, Rashkin managed to keep power in his hands thanks to the support of activists on the ground. An unexpected outcome. Sergei Levchenko. Valery Rashkin, a scandalous reformer. A lot, a lot of political power and more daily libertarian social support. Which I'm okay with. So we no longer have Zyuganov here. He's part of the old guard. 
We're going to reform, reform, reform. Russia of the future. Navalny? Next time, maybe. Outlawed fascists. Outlawed authoritarian democrats. Sounds about right. <clears throat> First, convocation. Get a way more political power, which I do like. Monthly society development goes up, too. Socialism with a human face. That's not bad, too. Um... I'm going to get this one first. Election to the new Soviet Parliament are a step which will determine the future of the country. Preparations for the first convocation have already begun, and the party promises that these elections will be free and fair. The people themselves will choose their representatives, and it is they who will be the voice of the new socialist order. Very soon, Soviet Russia will have a parliament that will defend the interests of the workers. Just in case, how many... We've got quite a few things here, which is nice. Um, but we need planes. We need a lot of planes going forward in the future. I like how much political power we have. Limited workers' rights? Is this not Russia? Is this not the Soviet Union? High welfare benefits? Why do we not have more welfare benefits? The cost is a little bit more, but more better monthly poverty and society development and infrastructure development. I'm going to leave that there. High taxes. Import economy. Free trade. Rules of engagement mandated reporters. Lose a little bit of attack, monthly military, let's see, combat equality, high combat equality. Heavy surveillance would be nice. Let's see, we've got capital punishment. Mass rehabilitation programs. Representation, over-representation. Free secondary education. Uh -huh. Public, free public higher education. I might get more stability right now. You know, we're going to grab that. We're going to hurt our budget a little bit, even more. But that's okay. We're going to keep, we'll, we'll build our way out of this. Soviet economics will work this time, I swear. Uh, let's see. First convocation. We've not forgotten about Gorbachev and his betrayal. He betrayed our vows and sold our people off to the West. Ugh. But the 80s is not only his mistakes. It was a time when people believed in a bright future. We'll not repeat past mistakes. We'll bring them back. The spirit of hope and justice, though. Real socialism with a human face will protect everyone, and the party will do everything to make this future a reality. Good. As Gennady Zyuganov, already the former head of our country in this communist party, decided to take a well-deserved rest. He served his country and people for many years, fighting for social justice and equality. Now Gennady Andreevich is going to spend his days at his DACA. We'll do his favorite thing, the apiary. He's always been fond of beekeeping and believes that this is a very important activity for maintaining the ecological balance and producing quality honey. His work and efforts in politics will be remembered and appreciated by the people for a long time. Thank you for your work, Gennady Andreevich. Just blow them up. Blow up those Africans. Good. Election to the Congress of People's Deputies. After Gennady Zyuganov won the presidential election, the country entered a new era of change. Today, they newly created. Congress of People's Deputies reflected the people's desire to see change and development. The Communist Party, which won a majority of seats in Parliament, promises to bring with it new ideas, strategies, and solutions for the well-being of the country. It is an opening for new horizons and opportunities for all citizens of Russia. It's a new age. <sighs> citizens of the revolutions. No more debt. Libertarian population. St. Petersburg, Leningrad, Sverdlovsk. Of course we should. Reestablish ASSRs and RSFSR. Less mobilization speed, more local supplies, more of that. Less max factors, which I don't like. Uh, that's okay. You know what? It's part of the game, so we might as well do that. Why not? And then what? Uh, what's going to do? Ooh. Association of Democratic States. Interesting. Okay. Association. Ten steps to a decent, decent life. Oh. That might be bad to do. Roll back liberal reforms. Uh, Chubais left Russia. And Anatoly Chubais has resigned as the Russian president's special representative for sustainable development and left the country. Bloomberg reported, citing sources, according to the publication, Chubais resigned and left the country because of the unexpected election results. Two acquaintances of Chubais told us that he and his wife, Avdotya Smirnova, left for Istanbul. Her acquaintance also confirmed that she was in Istanbul. According to one of them, Chubais was going back to Russia. Very soon, the oligarchs will soon the, start to leave the country as well. We need to be faster than they are. Capitalist conspiracy, capital flight. Oh boy. It's complete. Wait. When completed. Oligarchs coup. Huh. Class unit, take advantage of connections. This is all military stuff, huh? And hence Gerasimov's doctrine. Improved deep. Theory, deep battle theory.
Interesting. From the officer cord, centralized military structures. Give way to the youth. Calling on veterans. Might of the Red Army. Adapt to Chinese socialism. Revival of developed socialism. So which ones do we need to have done? Class unity, take advantage of connections. Our American comrades. Ah. Or class unity. <coughs> so we need class unity, huh? We need to do this one. We need small business support. Oh, I don't want to get cooed. Capital flight. Oi, not good. The people are masters of the country. Ah, the people are masters of our of the country. The people are the main value of the country. Revival of developed socialism. So what happens if you get counter -cued? Step to Chinese socialism. A new NEP. Ten steps to a decent life. A program developed many years ago is finally able to be implemented. These steps are aimed at improving living conditions, increasing incomes and social protections of citizens. After such a long time, we can take care of the people. Showing a practice effectiveness of our team. Well, I guess. I guess we have to go down this way. Support worker self-management. Maintain developed socialism. Huh. New head of Gosplin. So that's kind of going the old way. I guess we might as well go this way then. I guess it makes sense. We'll go with it for now and see what happens. You are still struggling here, aren't you? Alright, fine. Hang out first. Then come back down south. That's optics. It's 2022. We'll squeeze these guys out of here. National Front. Let's save some of our political parties' case. Reaction. After our election victory, the markedly increased activi activity of nationalists, neo imperialists, and other reactions led to mass anti Soviet protests, which were organized under the auspices of the new organization, Russian National Guard. We continue the activities by holding rallies, marches, and other forms of protest, demanding changes in the country's policies, and defending their ideological beliefs. Get to work, comrades. Utilize Antifa. Utilize Nazbals. Activates mission far right obscurantism. Huh, well that's not good either. Anti-Soviet resistance. Conservative revolution. Utilize Antifa. Utilize Nazbolt. Okay then. Well, adapt to Chinese socialism. Chinese economic models demonstrate effectiveness to the whole world, proving in practice that socialism, while being in such a modified form, is still viable and contributes to the development of prosperity. We're adapting to this experience, taking into account our national peculiarities. These measures will help modernize the economy, improve governance, and ensure a sustainable development of the country. We want to race down here fast. State unions? Um, that wouldn't be bad. Capitalist. Oh, that would be good to do, too. 
Nationalized resource companies. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Natural resources must belong to the people. We will carry out the final nationalization of oil, gas, and other riches of our land, so thus the revenues from them will go to the benefits of all citizens. State unions. A fate of the Yeltsin Center. One of the most shameful periods of Russian history is the Yeltsin years of the 90s. And nothing emphasizes this more than the darned Yeltsin Center. Look in the so-called liberal capital of Yekaterinburg. Many patriots want a gun, and we're willing to go along with it. Maybe the destruction of the Yeltsin Center will be a great symbol of Russia entering a new era, but is it worth it? Maybe we shouldn't destroy this expensive complex, but instead turn it into the Museum of Crimes of Capitalist Russia? That way we can permanently memori memorialize all the 30 years of suffering that Russia has endured to tear it down. The Museum of Crimes in Capitalist Russia sounds interesting. Adds an office park. Hmm. Get more debt. I don't like more debt, but I kind of like that. State unions. Over the previous year, state trade unions have degenerated to the point where they become nothing or something that only gives out gifts to its members on holidays. We take them under our control. And uh, they must become not just defenders of workers' rights, but key elements in the system of state governance. As has been successfully implemented in the PRC. Working together with labor unions will create a stable working government. Or environment. Kagalaritsky joins a communist party. Ah, oh, Lord of the Working Class. Lose political power. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Unbreakable union. Let's go with that one. To do. A prominent leftist Marxist intellectual, Boris Kagarlitsky joins a CPRF after Rashkin wins the inner party struggle. Cool. Rashkin will personally give him his party card. Okay. Go in there. Can you not smush him out? There goes the queen. So, but, oh, Olgar's making a move. Where are we at here? Prevailing. Support Rashkin's group. Defend political pluralism. Show that we are as open as, po as possible to the people. As necessary to maintain political pluralism. Our party no longer has a general line. We're always ready to discuss and argue with representatives of a wide variety of issues. Wow. Get a lot of political power from that, but we'll see. Is that a bad idea? Probably. Oh well. I wanted the political power. Oh, advanced Artie. Nice. Do we not have any Artie? Oh. Shame on me. Rocket artillery. Let them spread out. It's fine. A branch of the MCCR. The Museum of Crimes of Capitalist Rush is a very good project. It would be nice to expand and build a branch into another region. Oh, that'd be really good to do. We need more money, though. Yeah. People's Entrepreneur's Influence. Huh. Oh, that's really bad. Should win a little harder. Hopefully. Trade's not looking good. How much did it pay? Negative 70 billion now. Because of social spending. You can only afford so much. Mandated reporters. Combat equality, conscription equality, don't really want that one. 
state unions, let's please. I don't think we've got money for it, do we? Got a little bit of liquidity. This is what I want to do. Two more office parks would be nice. New era of socialism. Oh, factory output. Oh, so people aren't influence. Victor Bao escapes American war. Despite numerous reports of complete anarchy in the U.S., Victor Bao was able to escape back to his motherland. He today finally stepped on his native soil. He did not reveal revel in all parts of his journey, but promised to write a book about it. His next step in Russia is unknown, but he showed interest in joining political life for the country. So keep an eye on him. Okay. For 30 years of capitalism, Russia suffered a lot. It's necessary to begin the reconstruction of the people's economy, which would meet the needs of an ordinary person and, and not capitalists. It will revive the Soviet so legacy and strengthen it with new modern economic methods. People's entrepreneurs include longtime Communist Party sponsors, humanist businessmen, owners of the uh, people's enterprises, and former oligarchs who decided to cooperate with the communists. They willingly supported the new government by providing resources and capital, expecting that this would help them retain their influence and continue to enrich themselves under the changed conditions. They still seek profit, pretending to work for the good of the people, but their true goals remain deeply personal. Oh, hello. Okay, fine. Uh, small business reports. Yeah, why not? We recognize the importance of small businesses of the economy, and despite our socialist beliefs, it would be a mistake to leave them unsupported. We'll provide assistance and protection to small businesses, creating conditions for their growth and stability. This is in no way contradicts our principles, because a successful business means stable jobs and taxes for the treasury. Anti-corruption measures. Uh, Rashkin jails about. He's not a communist, he's a fascist nationalist. Russian chauvinist, Rashkin, from one prison to another. Accelerate automation. Well, rural development. Supply hub monthly. Oh, monthly industrial development goes down, actually. Uh, why don't we do this one first? Corruption is the main enemy of the just society. We'll introduce modern technologies such as artificial intelligence um, and zero trust to increase control and transparency at all levels of the government. These new methods will allow us to start f fighting this vice of our society in a new way and at least partially ensure fair governance. All right, so how badly are we looking? Oh, that's really bad. Okay, good to know. We're still getting attacked, which is fine here. Should be able to do quite a bit more damage. Especially starting from position of strength. New era of socialism, less political power, more civilian factory construction speed. But you do like the civvies. They're still losing a lot of money, though. Unbreakable union, less political power. Effects, not great. Uh, factory output's okay. 5%'s not much. Keep helping our uh, things out here. It's not really going up. That's not good. This is green, though. The Soviet middle class. A large and prosperous middle class must become the basis of a successful Soviet socialist economy. Our goal is to force this formation. It will consist of real professional specialists and a highly skilled workforce. The Soviet mean does not mean poor. Workers. Soviet does not mean poor. Class unity. The state owned by the people. Uh, the cooperation between cooperation between capitalists and workers becomes possible and even useful. Uh, their goal is to maintain the economy and create jobs. We will be able to unite the efforts of all sectors of the society for the common good, which would be great. Economic minister, huh? Socialist m market economist. Interesting. Factory output. Oh, that's pretty good to, to get too. Uh, so we're gonna do that one and kind of go from there. But I think we'll end it there. We're doing okay. We've become red, which is what we wanted. At least I wanted in the beginning. Um, Joe Biden's doing pretty darn well. APLA is doing quite well as well. And we're just going to get ready to go to war, pretty much. And make sure we have enough support for ourselves. Accelerate automation. Hey, that'd be really good, actually. But if you, you've enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. As we continue building up our military, our economy, and seeing if we can invade Ukraine. Like normal. Thanks for watching. And have a great rest of your day.